Hey, Tim Sykes here. I hope you're having a good weekend. Uh, it's my final few days here in Asia. I'm looking forward to getting back to the U.S. next week. I can't wait for my upcoming conference uh, in just three weeks from now. I'm excited to see a lot of you guys in Orlando. I think we have like six or seven seats left. Then we are 100% sold out. So if you haven't gotten your ticket, uh, do it. Also, my new DVD, uh, TraderChecklist.com, um, comes out next week. It is 100% free for you, zero strings attached. It is going to be 11 plus hours. Um, all you have to do is go to TraderChecklist.com, enter your name and email, and you will get uh, all 11 hours. Right now, we have a 30-minute uh, teaser that you can see uh, right now. But uh, the reason why I'm giving it away is because this is going to introduce a new framework that I use for every single trade. Uh, preparing trades while I'm in trades is just going to be so useful. So every single trade will now be graded on a scale or potential trade will be graded on a scale of uh, 10 to 100. And, you know, I'm going to look to take trades that are in the 70 to 100 range. Uh, my latest trade, BLDP, was a 74. So it was the bottom of the range, and it's not really that surprising that, you know, there was a little upside, but it wasn't a perfect trade. Um, also, I, I have to talk a lot about this. A lot of you guys are expecting so much from the markets. You guys have been spoiled uh, by this year and, and really last year and really the past seven or eight years now. Uh, we have been in a very strong bull market. And so when there's a few days when there's no plays, everyone's freaking out. Everyone's like, oh my God, is this the end? Guys, it's August. This is the slowest month of the year. It's actually surprising that there have been this many plays in August and July. So when there's a few off days, everyone's freaking out. Like it's it's crazy for me to get these messages. Um, you know, I have two losses in a row of roughly $400. I mean, this is less than what I spent on dinner last night. Small losses are okay. And I'm not trying to be a dick by saying that. I'm just trying to keep everything in perspective. Um, in the past month, you know, I'm still up 15 grand. So the strategy isn't over. The stock market isn't over. The plays aren't over. Some days, you know, they just don't work that great. And BLDP, um, you know, I bought it uh, correctly on a dip. Uh, you know, the, the real dip, I guess, was down to like 210. So there was a little bounce of like 20 cents a share here and then, you know, 15 cents a share here. But as I, as I was saying in the chat room on Friday, I mean, this stock is more boring than the barbershop that Michael Good goes to because he never goes, hence why he has his hair down to his knees, as you'll see him uh, in Orlando. So I don't really do well on boring stocks. I mean, from my buy point, I bought it at 220 on the dip here. Uh, you know, I guess there was 10 cents of upside and roughly 10 cents of downside. So I lost like two cents a share. I don't care uh, if I make two cents a share, if I lose two cents a share, if I make five cents a share or lose five cents a share on a two dollar or three dollar or five dollar stock. It's a scratch. Um, and so some of you guys who are freaking out over small losses, get over it. You know, you need to study and realize what my strategy actually is. Uh, VG, you know, I was buying here uh, on the breakout at 630 because this is a multi-month breakout right here. But frankly, it just hasn't done much in two days. Yes, it's a multi-month breakout. Yes, it's barely holding on. Um, but this is not a strong breakout. So when I lose, I don't know, what did I lose? Like nine cents a share on a $6 stock. Uh, I mean, I, I guess I could have made money if I timed it perfectly. I bought it at 630. It got up to what? 650. So there was 20 cents of upside and it also went down to like six. So there was 30 cents of downside and 20 cents of upside. You know, that's not good. Okay. So my entry wasn't that great. This stock isn't that great. Um, it's all right. It's not the end of the world. Some of you guys need to really just keep everything in perspective and not freak out. You know, Skies, I had a small gain. Kosi was a solid win. I wish I had a, a bigger position, but it was a speculative position. I'm not really good with stocks under a dollar a share. So I said very small position, but this was a 30% winner for me, and the stock actually spiked 60% over uh, a day and a half. So, you know, there was opportunity there. EBIO, I was dead on, but I took a small loss. OPGN, I had a nice uh, bounce, and ISNS was my awesome play uh, over the weekend where anybody could have done that. And, you know, I made 2000 If I had not been flying that day, I could have made four or 6000 I was a few hours late to the market open. So there are opportunities. You just have to 
recognize that not every trade is going to be perfect. Small losses are acceptable. And August is damn slow. It's not a coincidence that I'm traveling right now in August. It's not a coincidence that I know many big traders are taking July and August off. LX21, for example, who's the number one trader on Profitly, usually takes July and August off. Um, this year has been insane with the number of plays in both July and August. But please, please, please don't fill my inbox and don't worry so much about, you know, plays not happening for a day or two. Uh, it's really staggering to me how much action you guys need. That is the wrong mindset. You really need to buckle down and start thinking, wait a minute, I don't need to trade every single day. And when you're not trading in a day, it's not a bad day. It's not the end of the world. It's actually a good thing. You can go out, go live, go spend time with your friends and your family and go study. You know, it's actually, I can't wait for a bear market because I want you guys to study more and prepare more rather than trade as much as you think you need to. I know a lot of you guys are like, yeah, well, Tim, studying is fine, but I need to make money. That's why I'm here. I get it. But the money that you're going to make from unprepared trades or small speculative trades in a raging bull market, that's never going to make you rich in the long run. It might make you a little money now. It might shut up your friends and family from saying, ah, oh, Tim's ice is a scam. Penny stocks are a scam. You shouldn't be trading that. But you need to be long-term focused on this education. I can't just get it through your heads enough that this is going to last for years and decades. And I don't want people who think that they're just going to make money for like a month or two and then just stop trading, okay? You're going to have to study. You're going to have to prepare. It's very front end loaded with the hard work that you have to do. But the money gets paid out over time when you prepare and when you accept that you don't need to trade every day and you wait for great trades like ISNS. You know, none of these other trades, I mean, COSI was a decent uh, earnings dip buy and it's still hanging up there. EBIO broke out a lot more, so I just mistimed that. Uh, OPGN was a decent morning spike, but this was, you know, the best play of the past few weeks, um, you know, as evidenced by my making 25% and missing the top by uh, like $2 a share. So, this could have, would have, should have been a 50 to 75% winner, but even with my travel schedule, I was still unable to take profits um, over the course over holding over the weekend. So wait for plays like this. Um, you know, low flow earnings winners, low flow contract winners. You know, it's not a coincidence too that you know the the two trades that that haven't done so great for me lately, VG and BLDP. I mean, they have huge floats. Uh, you know, they're big companies, so they just don't move that much, especially in August. You know, they have good. Good news, BLDP won a deal with Toyota. Uh, VG, I actually thought it was an earnings winner, so I bought it for the wrong reasons. Um, but this was up because an analyst uh, compared one of their subsidiaries uh, to TWLO, which has been one of the hottest IPOs. So I actually bought this one for the wrong reasons, um, but it's still a good catalyst. Uh, it's just tough for bigger companies to move that much. So focus on smaller companies. I'm sorry that I haven't been in places where the Wi-Fi has been that great. You know, I, I want to make live videos of the fast-moving stocks like GBR uh, and VISN on Friday. But frankly, my Wi-Fi just hasn't been that good. So I, I can't wait to get back to the U.S. so I can start showing you some live videos on these fast-moving stocks. Um, following my plan of you know making live videos of my trading rather than alerting um, a lot of these stocks that just move too fast. Um, VISN would have been one of them. And I don't know why some of you guys are shorting VISN. Uh, you know, I, it, it makes no sense to me. You're, you're complaining, why is the stock spiking? Well, you're shorting a low flow former supernova on a Friday afternoon that has speculative news over the sale of one of its subsidiaries. So if you're shorting this, you are not just breaking one rule, you're breaking all all my rules and it's no wonder that some of you guys got short squeezed you can't just short anything that spikes I don't know what's wrong with some of you you, you know you just want action you say oh long-term downtrending okay it's gonna drop well you forgot to look back at some previous years when it went freaking supernova here okay so you have to remember to look back at previous months and previous years and don't be so aggressive shorting a first green day on a low float of a former supernova on a Friday no less it 
it, it astounds me. You know, I set these rules to try and help you guys, but a lot of you don't study. You don't even know the rules. And some of you who do know the rules, you just break them and you think that you're going to be okay. As I say, you know, if you drive my Ferrari 200 miles an hour into a 35 mile an hour school zone, you're probably going to crash. You're probably going to kill some kids. It's probably going to be very bad because you're breaking the speed limit. Stock trading and the stock market is no different. I'm trying to give you speed limits. I'm trying to give you road signs. But if you ignore them, then it's on you. It's not on the road signs that tried to warn you. So I like shorting pump and dumps. I like shorting first red days. This is neither. So I don't know why you guys are so aggressive. And it might very well come down and you might profit. You know, it got halted. But it is not a trade that I would take. And I was really saddened to wake up to seeing a lot of people uh, who were shorting this and, and getting squeezed. You know, I, I'm sorry that I'm not there 24 hours a day to remind you of the rules. Um, in Asia, you know, we're 12 hours ahead. So I've been staying up to like midnight 1 p.m. but I'm not staying up till you know 3 a.m. 4 a.m. to remind you on a Friday afternoon not to short uh, this should be ingrained in your head if you watch my Tim Raw DVD if you watch my how to make millions DVD if you read my watch list from the past few weeks where I'm saying shorting is very very tough right now and you know my bias has been mostly long uh, you know I again I guess I'm kinda known for shorting but Every time I try and short in this market, you know, I, I get squeezed or it's just too scary and stressful. So I've been very long biased. Um, and on a play like this, I don't know if I would chase it because it is such speculative news. Like what did its subsidiary get valued at? Did it really get sold? It's, you know, a sketchy Chinese company. There's no official PR. Now it gets halted on a Friday afternoon. I don't know what's going on. And when I don't know what's going on, I get out. This is probably the most important rule, especially in August, that I can teach you. When you are in doubt, simply get out, okay? I enunciate it to try and get you guys to realize that it's okay to take small losses. You know, VG, I wasn't sure what it was going to do the other day um, right in here. You know, it, it tried to break out here in the 630s. Then it started fading. Uh, I bought it for the wrong reasons because I misread the news. And I just played it safe and I lost nine cents a share. And right now I'd be break even. If I make nine cents a share, if I lose nine cents a share, if I break even, it's all a scratch. When I'm in doubt, I simply get out. Same thing with BLDP. I dip bought it. Actually, I dip bought it blindly and, and went to bed just thinking that it was going to hold its multi month breakout. This was kind of a risk, but you know. They won a nice deal with Toyota. I wanted to give it time, so I went to bed. I was fine with it. Uh, I woke up. I was down like four cents a share. The next day, I wanted to see a morning spike. It didn't morning spike. You know, it was using 222 as resistance. I had some Wi-Fi problems. I was trying to actually sell it here at 222. Um, right before the market opened when it looked like there was a solid wall of sellers. I couldn't get executed in here until a little bit of the morning panic. And then it had a delayed morning spike of what? I could have made five, ten cents a share. I don't care. I was in doubt, so I simply got out. And that is what you guys need to do. Don't worry about, you know, what happens if you're right. Worry about what happens if you're wrong. And if the stock is not doing exactly what you expect, you simply get out. I know that's not an exciting way of trading. I know that it's a cowardly way of trading. I know you want to be aggressive. Trust me, I hear more messages from traders than probably anybody else in the world. I know what you guys want. I know what your you know, degenerate gambling little brains want to do. But I'm telling you that there is another way and this will prevent disaster. I did not have to get out of BLDP or VG. I did not have to take small losses. But whether I make or lose $100 or $200 on my now $80,000 account, it just doesn't matter. Okay? You have to keep everything in perspective. Um, next year, when I go back to $5,000, you'll see me trade the exact same way. $100 or $200, even on $5,000, doesn't matter. Okay? Even if you have $2,000, I know it's, it's tough because you're like, well, if I lose $200, that's 10%. So, you know, maybe lock it down to if you're down $50, then you cut losses. But small losses in accordance with, you know, your whole account, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Half my job these days is just telling you guys it's fine because so many of you are scared and you know you just want to hold and you're like a deer in headlights when the stock goes against you and you don't know what to do. So let this 
ring in your ears. When you are in doubt, simply get out. I'm not saying that, you know, you should take big losses. You know, sometimes you can't afford to take small losses. Sometimes the stock moves too quickly. But if your mindset is always, I will cut losses quickly. I will always cut losses quickly. I will always cut losses quickly. You'll get in the mindset of trading like a coward and you'll protect yourself. And guess what? Sometimes, maybe when it's a smaller play, maybe when it's not August, these stocks will spike very nicely. But you having the right mindset of cutting losses quickly and accepting that some trades will, just won't work out, that's the beginning of your education as a trader. Uh, you know, too many of you think that this is like going to be this beautiful world where you make money every single time and, oh, Tim is a millionaire. He must be right every time. No, you have to accept defeat, small defeats, and you have to accept being wrong, small wrongs. Uh, you don't go all in. You don't use leverage. I trade like a coward and I teach other people to trade like a coward. And guess what? Even with these small losses, oh no, I'm still up 15 grand even while I'm traveling. Okay, so just think about this. Let this just simmer in your heads. Watch it a few times if you have to. But do not expect too much from the markets in August and do not expect so much from every single trade. Sometimes small losses are okay or small gains or break even. Not every trade has to be a home run. And if you want to really focus on you know, doing something right now as opposed to just focusing on trading, focus on studying, okay? Because a lot of you guys don't seem to know the rules or if you do, you don't seem to be paying too much attention to them. So it always helps to review the rules. When I have bad trades, you know, these aren't bad trades to me. These are, these are okay trades. But if I did not cut losses quickly, if I just held, if I, you know, uh, let a small mistake turn into a big disaster. I go back and review the rules. You are never too rich. You are never too uh, well off. You're never too experienced to go back to the basics because a lot of these basics are counterintuitive. You know, our society teaches us it's bad to be a coward. And here I am, you know, promoting the cowardly way of trading. Uh, I understand that a lot of what I teach is counterintuitive, but what I've learned over the years is that this counterintuitive stuff works. Small losses are okay. You protect your overall gains. You protect your overall account. Um, and, you know, you take it trade by trade. That's all I can say. So I hope this clears up a lot of confusion. Uh, also, I don't even know if I mentioned it. Uh, we got rid of private messages in the chat rooms because there was just too many people abusing it. And then we were policing it. And then some people got angry that we were policing it. So no private messages for anybody uh, other than the chat moderators who are legit traders. You know, me, Michael Good, Mark Crook, Tim Grittani. Uh You can still private message us. And that way you have, you know, good information flowing back and forth. We also have off-topic chat rooms. I don't think you guys realize it you know there's five people right now in the off topic I mean it doesn't really matter but if you have uh, any questions or or something that's not related to a hot trade or alerts you know the main chat rooms right here they're made for uh, alerts you know we don't want the whole chat room to be crowded uh, with people saying oh what do you what broker should I use if you have some questions, if you want to talk about non-alerts, you go into the off-topic chat rooms, okay? That's why we have them. So some of you guys are like, oh, no, we can't message. Yes, you can. Just go into another chat room, okay? But I'm sorry, a few bad eggs have ruined it for everybody, but, you know, that's reality, okay? I'm not going to allow penny stock promoters to pitch stocks to unsuspecting people in my chat rooms. Um, and that's why we had to police it. And if we can't police it, then, you know, I'm sorry, we're not going to tolerate that. So uh, go into the off-topic chat rooms, use them uh, for, for Q&A, and also use these uh, private messages uh, you know, for uh, the, the moderators. And the moderators will try to answer all your questions. But understand we also get overwhelmed and overloaded. This is part of the reason why the Tim Challenge is so useful because we do Q&A webinars weekly between me, Mark Crook, uh, Tim Grittani, Michael Good, and we can answer questions uh, in a very comprehensive way. You know, some people ask these these crazy questions on private messaging, and I, you know, I, I'm in the middle of a trade, or I can't really illustrate it with a chart because I'm doing something. So the Q and A webinars are really your time to shine if you have questions. If you're one of my challenge students, um, you know, here is uh, someone who just PM me literally 
as I'm making this video. Tim, I'm studying the how to make millions for a second time and it's a lot of info. I still get confused with the charts. I think my problem is that I get in the middle of the range and that's why I keep losing. I hope in Orlando I can get a better understanding. The challenge is great. I enjoy the chat, the webinars, videos, everything. Thanks for it. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you for the question. And yes, if you're trading mid-range, you know, that's that's a good way to, to be confused. Focus on breakouts. Focus on stocks that hold support. Um, or shorting stocks that break support. Trading mid-range and trading choppy stocks that just zigzag, it makes trading very confusing. And, you know, frankly, that's why 90% of traders lose. They're trading the wrong patterns. They're trading choppy stocks. Uh, you have to really think of yourself as a retired trader and only trade when there is a great setup. Uh, that's why I really do better, actually, I think, percentage-wise uh, when I'm traveling because it forces me to focus on the best trades. So I know it's weird. I know it's counterintuitive, but it works. So I will see you guys in the chat room tomorrow, but I hope that this video answered some of your questions. Thank you. My name is Tim Sykes, and I teach people to trade stocks. I am a self-made multimillionaire. So this is the ideal trade that I'm going to talk about. I want you guys to understand every single aspect of this trade. 